Okay, welcome. Let's get started. Um, I'm Jeffrey G. O'Brien, the director of Lunch Poems, and we are thrilled to have Yusuf Komunyaka here today, um, even remotely. I expect the, his presence and the poem's presence to warm up this digital space. And welcome to all of the invisible poetry lovers out there. Um, I'm going to start just by reading two quatrains from the Emperor of Water Clocks from two different poems. And I just want to say something about them that I think speaks to Komunyaka's practice across his incredibly extended and necessary career. The first quatrain of Commonwealth reads, after trench warfare rolled over Europe, the scent of nitrate and mustard gas hung in valleys and avarice drifted into dance halls. Just let that sit with you for one second. And then in another poem called Praise Be, the third quatrain reads, silence was backed up in the cypress, but you could hear the birds of woe singing praise where the almost broken through sorrow rose from the deep woods. Pick those two quatrains for several reasons. They both indicate the interpenetration of the human and the natural world, of the co-presence, the mutually constitutive presence of woe and praise of violence and pleasure, um, mustard gas in the valleys, avarice in the dance halls. And I think they speak to the kind of witness um, that Komunyaka has performed across his many books, one in which he can't think pleasure and violence in isolation from each other, even for the scope of a single poem. They are always present. Um, each needs to be reminded of the other's presence and the reader of their co-presence. For that reason, his poems have never struck me as having an optimism in them or some kind of fatal pessimism either. I think they simply want to describe what's there. And if optimism is located anywhere, it's in the very fact of the work, in the very fact of the poems as responses to our present and as multiple deep histories. I should say also that both of those poems and quatrains work a really supple, loose but palpable, accentual meter. Another way that you can just make a structure that persists, that there's a fundamental optimism of sound and of working in the substrates of syllables as you document everything that has happened again and again and again in myth, in particular moments of history and in their convergence in our present. Um, I think I'll let you hear some of how Komunyaka continues to do that. Um, his most recent book is Emperor of Water Clocks, but we're incredibly fortunate to have um, Everyday Mojo Songs of Earth, a new and selected coming out. Is it new and collected or new and selected? New and selected. New and selected coming out in March, I believe? Yes. And there you will be able to feel how long and how far Komunyaka has managed to make those optimistic structures that actually just captured the world as it is. Please join me in welcoming Yusuf Komunyaka. It's great to be here. So I'm um, returning to Berkeley. I'm going to start off by reading a poem. It's the first poem in Everyday Mojo Songs of Earth. It's called A World of Daughters. Say, lick clean at birth, say, Weeping in the tall grass where this tantalizing song begins. Birds perch on a crooked branch over a grave of an unending track into the valley of cooling waters. The soil's thirst. Lessons of earth on more of the first tongue say, I have gone back, says the oracle. Counting seasons and centuries, undoing fault lines between one generation and next, as she twirls sackcloth edge with pollen. And one glimpses what one did not know, say, this is where the goat spoke legends ago, and the ring of fire to deliver a sacrifice. To feel signs 
depends on how and why the singer's song fits into the mouth. Well, I believe the bar rip story the other way round, entangled in decree, blessing, law, and myth. One only has to listen to night-long pleas of a mother who used all thousand chants and prayers of clay, red ochre, blown from the lips onto the high stone wall, retracing land bridge to wishbone, my own two daughters and granddaughter. The three know how to work praise and lament, say, ready to sprout wings of naked flight and labor. Yes, hangs into earth. We rose from Lucy to clan, from clan to tribe. And today we worship her sun polished bones, remembering she is made of questions. No, mama is not always the first word before counting eggs in the cowbird's nest. It begins in memory. Now say her name, say Dinkish, mother of us all. And I'm going to read the first poem that um, introduces um, Emperor of Watercocks, the land of Cock King. A drowned kingdom rises at daybreak, and we keep treasured on. A silhouette rides the rope swing tied to a spruce limb. The loudest calm in the marsh look at the sinkholes. The slope brokenness. A twin rainbow straddles the rocks. Say how forgiven. How nature, how brave nature is. She drags us through teeming reeds and turns day inside out, getting up under blame gazing at the horizon as a throaty sparrow calls the raft home. A wavering landscape is of a one foothold. Are we still moving? This old story begins, this old story behind stories turned an epic season, a tangle of roses moved by night soil the boar, Congo snake, and earthworm eat into pigweed. The middle ground is a flotilla of stars, a peacock carousel, and Ferris wheel. Spinning in the water as, as vines unstitch the leech work of salt, Thick mud sewn up like biters fallen into a ditch blooming, about to erupt water lily and spider firm. I see the tip of a purple mountain, but sweetheart, if it weren't for your amber kisses, I would have turned around days ago. Timbuktu. I like to, um, I should say that I like to just crisscross emotional and psychological terrains and find myself at home momentarily and write myself out of that place, that emotional space. Timbuktu. I sing 
an analogy for the city of 333 saints. For every crumbling, crumbling mass and minaret, for the libraries standing for centuries against dust storms, for the nomads herding trees of life across the desert, along trails, cameras once hauled salt to rafts woven on the river Niger. Before the empire of San fell, the griots speak of an epic memory of stardust and sand, but now mercenaries kid cap, kidnap, run, drugs, and kill in bold daylight. Blood money brought them to Libya, and more blood money took them home, brandishing stolen guns and grenades. When Lord Byron intones and Don Juan, where geography finds no one to oblige her, I hear my name. But no one stands up to prophecies the other side of limbo against the modern as a metallic eye drones overhead. Medieval clouds may promise safe passes or escape routes out of Mali, but the God-fearing cannot remember the faces of death after kicking in all the drums. Fortress. Now, I began with these two hands held up before me as blessing and weapon. Blackbirds in fierce flight and instruments of touch and consolation. This sign means stop. And this one of course means come forth friend. I draw a circle in the red iron clay around my feet where no evil spirit dares to find me. One's hands held at this angle of a boy's head or a roof over a sanctuary. I am a greenhorn in my fortress in the woods with my right eye pressed to a knot hole. I can see a buzz in the persimmon tree is ripe lead and gold, a tiny white cross in each seed. A girl's fiery jump rope strikes the ground. I see the back door of that house close to the slow creek where a drunken, angry man stumbles across the threshold every Friday. I see forgiveness, unbearable twilight, and these two big hands know too much about nail and hammer, plank and uneasy sky. Hewn stone and mortar is another world, and sometimes a tall gate comes first. The huge wooden barrels of grain, flour and salt meat, and quick lime before 28 crossbows and four towers. Nighttime. Did a brain, let me start over. 
did a big brain raise us into mountains to range over the valley to see the approach before whoever it was knew they would walk a path between dust and dawn half away and I squinted and sex as I dare made the lids dance. Now the brain pauses on the edge of ascension or surrender one sleepy hand pointing at a totem and the other wearing a stick or jagged stone. Blue dementia. In the days when a man could lose a swarm of words inside his belly, nestled against his spleen singing. In the days of night riders till life tongue to read, to blues and sorrow song, call out of the deep night. Another man done gone. Another man done gone. In the days when one could lose oneself, all up inside love that way, and then moan on the bone, till the gods cried out in someone's sleep. Today, already I've seen three dark-skinned men discussing the weather with demons and angels, gazing up at the clouds, and squinting down into iron grates along the fast streets of luminous encounters. I double-check my reflection in plate glass and wonder, am I passing? Another Lucky Thomason, a Marin Brown, cornered by a blue dementia. Another dark-skinned man who woke up dreaming one morning, and then walked out of himself dreaming. Did this one dare to step on a crack in a sidewalk, to turn a midnight corner and never come back whole? Or did he try to stare down a look that shoved a blade into his heart. I mean, I also know something about night Riders and Cat God. Yeah, honey, I know something about talking with ghosts. This is a fairly new poem, um, poem entitled History is Human. The, the nurse says, sir, do you want, do you want something stronger? I shake my head thinking, yeah, something to get into your liver and hide where love hides, where it strums a banjo and raises a bold fist into rusted country. And when white America gets hooked, our history is human. Somewhere a big band strikes up stardust and the nurse approaches at midnight sand. Do you need something unreal? Something to make your leg feel as if it belongs to someone else? On a checkerboard dance floor?
Islands. This is a poem that I dedicated to um, Derek Walcott. I vis visited him in St. Lucia to talk about his work. Um, islands. It was years ago. Islands. An island is one great eye gazing out a beckoning lighthouse searchlight, a wishbone compass, a counterweight to the stars. When it comes to outlook and point of view, a figure stands on a rocky ledge, peering out towards an archipelago of glass on the mainland. The seagull's wings touch in the tip of a high wave out to where the brain may stumble. But when a mind clams down from its high, craggy lookout, we know it is truly a stubborn thing and has to leaf through pages of dust and light through pre-memory and folklore, remembering fires rode down there till they pushed up through the seafloor in plumes of ash covered the dead, shaken awake, worlds away, and silence filled up with centuries of waiting. Sea urchin, turtle, and crab came with earthly know-how, and one bird arrived with a sprig in his beak. Before everything clouded with cries, a millennium a small depths now topsoil and seasons of blossoms and a single seed. Light edge across salt crusted stones, across a cataract of blue water, and lost sailors' parrots spoke of sirens, the last words of men buried at sea. Someone could stand here contemplating the future, leafing through toned pages of St. Augustine, of prophecies by fishermen, translating spur and folly down to Tapworth. The dreamy-eyed boy still in the man, the girl in the woman, A sunny forecast behind today, but tomorrow's beyond words. To behold a body of water is to know pig iron and mother wit. Whoever this figure is, he will soon return to dancing through the aroma of dagger's log, ginger lily, bull and vilia, between between chants and strings struck to gores rally the hill and air and church steeple birds fly sweet darkness home. Whoever this friend or lover is, he intones redemptive harmonies to lie down in remembrance is to know each of us is a prodigal son or daughter looking out beyond land and sky, the chemical and metaphysical beyond falling and turning water wheels in the colossal brain of damnable gods, a eureka held up to the sun's blinded eye, born to gaze into far of the conquering frontiers. The mind comes back to rest, stretching out over the white sand. Turner's great tussle with water. 
As you can see, he first mastered light and shadow. Faces moving between grass and stone, the beast waiting to the ark, and then the decline of the Carthaginian Empire before capturing volcanic dreads. But one day, while walking in windy rain on the Thames, he felt he was descending a hemp ladder into the galley of a ship down in the swollen belly of the beast with a curse hook and a bell and bucket, and to whimper and howl and to shit and to piss and shit. He saw winds hurled sails and mass pole as the crewmen wrestled slaves dead and half dead into a darkened whirlpool. There it was, groaning. Then the water was stabbed and brushed till voluminous and the bloody sharks were on their way. But you're right, yes, there's still light crossing the divide seeping around corners of the thick golden frame. Um, years ago, I was taught, I was teaching at Princeton and what I would do, I would walk to work and I would write short 16 line poems um, in my head. And, and um, when I got to the office, I would just write them down with the line breaks and all that. <laughs> it, was a, it was a task for myself. Um, o to the maggot. This is the last poem. Brother of the blow fly and Godhead, you work magic over battlefields and slaps a bad pork in flop houses. Jess, you go to the root of all things. You are sound and mathematical. Jesus Christ, you're merciless with the truth. Ontological, illustrious, you cast spells on beggars and kings. Behind the stone door, a Caesar's tomb, a spit trench, and a fill a rag weed. No decree or creed can outlaw you as you take every living thing apart, little master of earth, no one gets to heaven without going through you first. Thank you. Hi, my name is Noah Warren and I'm the coordinator. Thank you, Yusuf, for those lessons of earth and oracle, uh, the poetry of great beauty, vision and mind. Um, thank you to the university libraries for our funding and support in all channels to ETS who uh, have done such a great job with technical support uh, here and in all our events. If you enjoyed this reading, um, I encourage you to pick up Yusuf's collections and his forthcoming book, Everyday Mojo. If you'd like to revisit this reading, as with all our other readings, you can find an archive at youtube.com under the Lunch Poems playlist. We hope you'll join us for our next event on February 4th with Kiki, Kiki Petrosino. Um, and until then, thank you. Thank you all for attending. Um, and we hope to see you next year. Email, uh, you can at any time, you can go to our website at lunchpoems.berkeley.edu and sign up for our mailing list. <laughs>